Welcome back to Mulberry Branch Farm. Welcome to part two of Gunther Saga. Um, we called the vet this morning, um, let them know that his temperature was normal. Um, he has been cooled. He's been given appropriate treatments to help his body come out of that stress. But I'm, I'm actually really starting to suspect something a lot more serious just because he's so lethargic. He does not want to stand up. He can hardly keep himself in a normal cushing position. And I'm fighting to keep him sternal and cushed in a normal, comfortable position. I often come in and he's laying over. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what he's doing right now. So the vet can't get out here until about five o'clock this afternoon. It's now like one o'clock. So I have treated this morning just to nip some things in the butt. We gave him some thiamine. Um, thiamine can almost never hurt them um, and if he's deficient it can cause a lot of neurological issues so at least from what I've read I'm not I am not as well versed in camelids as I am in goats but it's because llamas and alpacas are naturally healthy they don't require as much they don't come up sick or dull-eyed or scouring or anything like that that's one of the one of the main things that I love about Having a llama in with our goats is a guardian animal. They're just healthy. Their diets almost match um, a goat's diet. So I did give him some banamine subcutaneously this morning. Subcutaneous means right underneath the skin. So I just made um, a tent out of his skin right in his armpit and gave him a subcutaneous shot like I would a goat for like a CDT booster or something like that. Um, that banamine is going to help take the inflammation out of his body and also it, it acts as a painkiller. I usually give my small goats this orally, but it's because they're small. <laughs> He's a bigger animal, so I did give him a shot and hoping that it would work quickly, but I don't even, guys, I don't even know if he's gonna make it until the vet can get here. I'm, I am having a hard time dealing with this. So uh, we gave him banamine, we gave him thiamine, I gave him a dewormer because guys, he's, he was already dewormed about a month and a half ago, so really his stool is all tight pellets like it should. He's not been unhealthy. He was a little lethargic about two days ago, but like before yesterday, he was out moving around in the field and everything, so I don't know if it was heat stress and now he's just struggling to come out of it or if there's something just a lot more serious. So I did start to treat for meningeal worms. Meningeal worms kind of attack the spinal cord they make their way up towards the brain. They cause a lot of neurological issues in your llamas, which can be circling, depression, confusion, blindness, and then eventually death or paralysis. They, and I'm worried because he can't get up and his legs, he's not really responding a lot to me when I'm messing with his feet. Usually he'd try to kick the snot out of me, regardless if he was cushed or not. And um, so there are a couple different dewormers that are preventatives and there's some research say that they can be part of a treatment. Um, these dewormers are usually like Safeguard or Ivermectin. Those types of dewormers are used because they have been proven to, um, to be able to pass through the blood brain barrier. So other dewormers don't really have these qualities and that's why they're suggested to treat camelids with meningeal worms. And we have a ton of deer guys that come in and out of our field all the time. I can't help that. Um, and I'll, I'll put some informational links down below how camelids contract meningeal worms. Now this affects ruminants. So my goats can get meningeal worms, but camelids seem like, especially alpacas and llamas, are a lot more susceptible to it. So he just, I don't know. Let's go, let's go take a look at him. Buddy. Hey, bud. Can you see that one? Oh. You hear that teeth grinding, guys. Can you sit up? Can you sit up? I know. I know.
So you guys saw, we just got him to eat and take some water. I guess the chicken didn't know it was in here. Scared her. Psycho chickens. So the water that we gave him has electrolytes plus some Gatorade in it to sweeten it up a bit. Last night he drank one bucket of regular water and then another full bucket of water with electrolytes and Gatorade in it. So giving him water with Gatorade this morning, but he just is not as thirsty as he was yesterday, but I don't know guys, I just feel really stumped. You guys can see I've got that hay bale right there. And while he is choosing to snack on it, it's not really for him to snack on. It's actually to keep him sternal. A lot of ruminants, it's not good for their rumen for them to lay on their sides. They're meant to sit and rest in a sternal position. For camelids, such as alpacas, camels, and llamas, the sternal position is called cushing, where they sit with all four of their feet kind of tucked underneath of them. That's their normal at rest. And you guys can see, he just doesn't look, he does not look like I would like for him to look. So I moved that hay bale up forward just because I thought maybe I had it a little bit too far back on him to keep him more sternal up front. He's in a good cush position in the back, but his front legs, he just doesn't want to keep tucked underneath of him very well. But it's because when you struggle with the animal, they pretty much struggle against you, whether he, because they just don't know that you're doing it for their good. They just know you're trying to mess with them. So um, that'll also double as roughage and forage for him to keep him sternal, but he can also snack on it throughout the day. So I'm gonna let him rest. I need to go back inside and go back to work. I'm on my lunch hour. I just, I come out and every time he's down like that, he's down on his side, he's not sternal, he's not cushing, and it's just scaring me to death. I am so scared that I'm gonna come out here and he's gonna be laying on his side and not breathing. So I'm just hoping he can get through until five o'clock when the vet gets here and that the vet can give us a prognosis that's good or very doable with the right amount of attention. And I'm willing to put in any amount of attention I need to for him. He's, he's so important on this farm, guys. Every, every animal here is important and we care for all of them equally to the best of our ability, but there's just something special about him. I'm just, I'll be heartbroken if we lose him. So last night the vet didn't get to come out um, he gave us a phone consultation. I've worked with this vet for many, many years. I've shadowed him. I trust him. And um, he had a really good point. He said, the, the llama's already down. You're already doing everything you can for it. Um, you've already started pretreatment for meningeal worm. And based off of the message that I left him, that's what he thinks it is. But he brought up a very good point that I agree with, and it's something you'll often read about meningeal worm, is that by the time it starts to show clinical signs like this, it's usually pretty far into the last stages and the prognosis isn't good. But, always looking on the brighter side of things, we've brought him through this once. We're going to try to bring him through it again. So, yesterday I did a lot of treatments with like banamine, um, started the dewormers that can cross the blood-brain barrier because that's the only way you can get rid of meningeal worms or um, prevent for them, is to have those specific types of dewormers that can do that. Um, we're giving him nutritional drenches. I've been making him a paste to try to eat so that his digestive system doesn't have to work too hard and he can pull more nutrients from it that way. It'll be a lot more efficient for him. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna bring you guys along this morning and we're gonna go ahead and give Gunther his shots of dexamethasone, banamine, thiamine, and whatever else I have in a cocktail to give him to try to help him feel better. Okay, so today is day three of treating and I don't want to be part of that camp of ye of little faith, but I'm not even going to show you guys him because 
He had such a good day yesterday. I just, I don't understand. So, I've, I'm giving him everything I can give him. So, I'm really hoping that he, he just kind of picks up. I, at this point, I think I'm just making him comfortable enough to die. And I just, it makes my heart hurt. I haven't slept. <laughs> We've been rolling him around the um, stall just to get him off one side and onto the other so that he doesn't go too numb. We've been looking up plans to make a sling for him to see if he can get up. I mean, he yesterday he was eating, he drank. I have not been able to get him to eat or drink anything today. So I just syringed some water into him. I have a lactate ringer if I need to give it to him if I'm worried he's going to dehydrate, but I don't know, it's just such a big turn from yesterday. Yesterday he ate and drank and sat, sat up with his head up. Today he's had a little bit of a fever and um, just got his head down. So it's, it's not looking good guys. So I uh, just came out to give Gunther his shots this morning doesn't need them anymore, so. Uh, um, we knew it was bad yesterday because he wouldn't, he didn't want to sit up. He wouldn't drink. He wouldn't eat usually when any type of livestock go off feed completely or water. It's, you're really fighting against time and I think I'm, and he was our guardian, guys. Like, I don't even know what to do. It's just really stressful. And not just because it's one of those things where it's like, oh, I gotta go get another guardian. It's, we've had him for about five years now and he's done such a good job and he's been so easy to work with. There's just a lot of things that go into making decisions on guardians and a lot of care and connection with the guardian and your hurt. It's hard to watch an animal depreciate when you've seen them so healthy and so vibrant. Especially with your livestock guardians, your team, you, you have the same goal. It's been about five days since Gunther passed away and it has taken all of those five days for me to be able to articulate a little bit how I'm feeling to come back to you guys in a really good headspace and a little more grounded and a little less raw so that I'm not just a ball of um, emotions and weeping and I am going to really try not to resort to that here <laughs> I feel like I've felt that enough the last couple of days and um, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Not that I'm ashamed at all about expressing emotion. I just think it's very important to realize that whenever you're dealing with life, you are also participating in a transition to death. And death is natural. Grief is natural. Feeling upset about the death of an animal that you've been taking care of and tending to for five years that they've actively been protecting your other animals when you aren't around and in your stead for almost five years is a devastating loss. It, I, I don't know, I guess maybe I felt like this need to explain to you guys the emotions that I showed and to let you know that they're natural and that just because I have 20 plus goats, I've been raising them for almost 10 years now that I still have feelings, I still grow um, attached, I am still affected by their presence or the lack thereof of their presence when they've passed on, and that I do understand that welcoming life on our farm is as natural as watching it transition to death. Because where there's life, there is death. And that's okay. And grieving for it is okay. And I'm just gonna go grieve a little bit more and we will eventually have another Livestock Guardian that will do as good of, if not a better job, of Gunther, hopefully. So, 
with that guys i am sorry that this is not a feel good episode i am sorry that this didn't contribute to smiles and laughter or gaining knowledge i'm hoping maybe if you have a llama and you're not familiar with meningeal worm then hopefully maybe this can be a precautionary tale to you maybe this will help you look at signs and symptoms that you may need to be aware of. But for us, it's just tragedy. It's tragedy. It's another reminder that life is fragile and temporary and that life throws us curveballs and we can either stand and strike out or we can keep on swinging and try to make something out of it. So I think that's gonna do it for us, guys. I hopefully will bring you some happier videos here in the next couple. Um, but for right now, we're just dealing with the loss of a wonderful guardian animal. And it's okay to celebrate his life, and it's okay to feel sad that he's no longer here. So with that, guys, I'm going to sign off. I can't wait to see you in the next one. I promise it will be brighter and happier and not with so many tears and heartache. So, so just remember, stay healthy out there and be kind to one another. We'll see you in the next one.